We in here? Yeah. Yeah. What the new new episode? Yeah. Part of Rouge podcast. Yeah, there's no Jamaican food, but it's coming. It's coming. What's coming? It's though? early. Because I saw, I saw wait, wait. what right you got. If I get anything less, bro, <laughs> we can be order finished. right now as we're talking. It's very local. It's very local. So what, what food is we'll it? We'll get it through the Jamaican. window again. Whatever, what do you want? Yeah, I'll take that. But uh, just, delivery team. Yeah, I don't want it to be too spicy. Rah! Yeah, no, no. That's the right side. No, cause. my belly sometimes gets a bit mad. I don't want to have to interrupt the interview, bruv. So. Oh, and I'm acting like that. Yeah, toilet yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah there's, I bought toilet tissue. We're good, man. <laughs> uh, I saw someone say, don't eat again on the mics because it sounds disgusting. It does, though. Is it? We'll have yeah, a couple no, bites no, and no, put yeah. it down. I can't, last time I clocked it, when, when it came in, I was munching. I was like, yeah, oh, the, shit. The, you the know, and you put it away mics. and you're like, yeah, that's what I, I don't know if you saw me do it. I came this way yeah. straight away, it's like eating like that because I already get it on half cast. Yeah, people complain so much on half cast. Do you know what? I, yeah. I, I'll do it for after. Like, I'll eat mine at one o'clock, bruv. Yeah. Proper things like that. Yeah, like whatever, whenever we finish. Yeah. How long does it take to when, it, when you order it? How long does it take? It's around the corner, so literally like 10, 15 minutes. Oh, but I'll wait till we finish then. It's a Caribbean That's one, so it takes like. Yeah, the, the time will be different. Four then. days, you yeah. four. <laughs> yeah. we're, so, here. we're here again in your in your living room, very organic settings. Yeah, it's nice and I like it, bro. Yeah, like it, yeah. The trainers, the trainer selection. Yeah, it's bro, jarring, bro. All yeah. freebies, all freebies, innit? Bare freebies, bro. I'll lie to you. Shout out, Nike. Do you buy clothes? Very rarely. I used to spend loads of money on clothes back in the day, but yeah. now I'm fortunate, man. A lot of people send me stuff. Yeah, it's weird yeah. how it goes like that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's nice, That's isn't it? Mad. It feels better on your skin. It feels nice, bro. It fits better. Everything feels better when you when you get some Freemans. I feel like a it's child true. again because obviously you didn't pay for nothing as a child. Your parents paid for it, so yeah. it's almost like, wow, I've got parents all over the world now. Like yeah. Nike got some parents. But there, there's something that I do love doing is like I, I buy I buy retro football shirts. Mm. I go on eBay or whatever where I can find those kind of rare ones. That for me is like the one thing I like buying. Is it? I used to be trainers, but obviously now, yeah, no point. You see that thing we've done on uh, on BT? Yes, I've seen it. Have you hit them guys up? Yeah, classic football they shirts got guys. They've got everything. They've got everywhere. You know what I love? What they've got as well, the tracksuit tops. Th- those? From back in the day as well. Mad. You see them, man, they need to start linking, man, a bit more properly. Though. Yeah, they're not. Any chance they're you saying. could, like, you know. They might bring you in. They're good guys. I think they're from, like, no, I'm in touch with them. You can touch with them. Manchester, yeah, yeah, yeah. they got some bad shirts. I'm like, bro, you need to just, but I need to plug me properly. Come on, this is the one or two. should be plugging this. That's what I'm saying, yo, CFS, bruv, we're here. We're, we're calling you out. Where's Whoa. the shirts? <laughs> my, my cousin gave me this from. Scott Gilmore gave me this. Um, he's played for Not Enough Forest. Nice. Who else played in that kit? Oh, there's little. There's uh, little. Oh, uh, yeah, Bart Williams, back. you were saying. Stone, Stoney played in it. Stuart Pierce played in it. Fam, this is the days of autographs. Like, look, yeah. they all signed it and gave it to me. Beautiful. I was so gassed. Kits back then were better, in my opinion. My Leo, quality. real. Still I got still the got the tag. Wow. The seams are still slyly in as well. Bruh. This is old school, fam. I feel. Yeah, the greedy. kits, the kits back kits in the day back were better. Were better, better innit? Mad kits like the Liverpool one with the. The stripes there. Remember that one? The Adidas one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the Adidas one, that was sick. The, um, the Arsenal one they tried to bring out again, like the retro one. Mm. Oh, the, the A9 kit. That kit was unreal. I love the dream the Gunners at the kits. back. Oh. Arsenal, but you know who else I liked as well? Spurs, Holston Pills kit. Yeah, Oh, nice. that's old school. That's what, but even the material for me, yeah. it was just better. Yeah. Only thing is, they were baggy kits though. That's they the were baggy, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I look at pictures of myself when I played when I first came in West Ham, mate. They were for like four sizes up. But... But it was kind of wavy. I kind of yeah. like the baggy fits sometimes. It's the nineties fits, I think, are better. Do you reckon? Yeah, because yeah. now you can rock it like out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, but to play, to play. Was it hard? The, the, the hard, tighter but... kit's better. Yeah. Okay. So you feel a lot more lightweight. Uh, well, anyway, yeah. yeah. How's it been going though, Rio? How's everything going with you? It's alright, man. It's alright. I've been busy, man. Summer ended. The kids, bro. My kids had eight, eight or something weeks. Off. Eight weeks off? Bruv. We had five when we were trying to go off. Mate, mate, if you had six, you were doing it. But eight. eight and a bit weeks, I think it was. And when they went back, mate, the cartwheels around the playground I was doing. <laughs> me, me, me and my missus were like, wow, that p- went so energy. slow. But well, you got to keep them enter- entertained. Yeah. But yeah. watch when your kids get to like school and, that, and they're going properly. You're going to be like, the summer holidays... Is like a madness. Like they're at home, you got to, all you're thinking about is what we're we gonna do tomorrow. With them, what am I gonna do mm. tomorrow? Whereas normally it's just like they go in school, they might have a bit of football after. My little girl that's horse riding or something, whatever. But so you ain't got to think too much. It's on autopilot. Mm. I need to think a lot holidays now. Holidays is, is mad. I had them for the holidays. I had them for three months. Three There's only so months. many parks you can go to, bro. Bro, they're bored of the parks. They're yeah. bored of every like. They'll go. I take them to school as well. They'll go to school, come back. I'm tired from working all day, and they're looking at me like, "Daddy," I'm just like. 
Bro, you've just come in from school. How yeah. can you want something to do yeah. now? But you're meant to go sleep. Mm. <laughs> They're not on How? Because obviously I, I've seen the change in Poet since he's had kids. Mm. He's still a madman. But <laughs> there is an element of, uh, I think his drive is bigger. He, he takes stuff Focus. a lot more focused. I mean, maybe I need to pop out a kid. But <laughs> how much did, how much, ha, having kids for you, how much did that shift maybe your, your life situation and, and how you view the world? Um, I think you just start thinking more about the future. Like you think long term. I always thought short term, short term, short term. Then I had kids and I started thinking, right, I want to put something in place for, for hopefully that they can go into when they get older. Yeah. Like there'll be nothing more pleasing for me than to see my kids walk into a business that I've helped create. Like, they ain't going to start at the top. They're going to start as being like, I don't know, whatever it is that's the most basic, then then they can earn the right to go through. They ain't going to go through. You have to earn the right. But the opportunity mm. to work will be there. Mm. But I feel a lot of kids lack the opportunity. Mm-hmm. So if I can create the opportunity for them to have a, a foot on the ladder, that'll be, that's why, you know what? One of my friends I, I met when I lived in Manchester called um, uh, Mahmoud and Nurez. They, the Kamani family, they own Boohoo and Pretty Little Thing, Boohoo oh, Man. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're lit. <laughs> they done my, that's our, that, my restaurant in Manchester's with them. Um, after a few years of friendship and then we just opened that and various other things. But lovely family, but boy, the drive in that family and the, the way that I see the, that the, the, the fathers groom their kids mm. to have a work ethic. Okay. Mad. You and can't they, create a pretty little thing. Boohoo man and all these other companies that they've got, yeah, which young boys are starting now. These young boys, Umar, they're starting them, Samir, without having drive. Like everyone's gonna go, oh, but their dad owned Boohoo and he had it all set up. Yeah, that's cool, he had it all set up, but then they've got to go and run with it. They mm. made it lit, I they can't lie to you. They made it proper. Could you see it everywhere? They smashed now, it. They yeah. have killed smashed it. You just done New York Fashion Week, bruv. Serious? Yeah, pretty little thing, yeah, like wow. ridiculous. Like, so. That that time, yeah, it was people like that <clears throat> being surrounded by people like that who uh, who have been successful in their own right, but are then saying to their kids and setting a tone for their kids and saying, "Listen, you but you lot are gonna have to. I've got money, but that, that ain't your money. You have to work." Mm. Like, because that can probably be a trap. Cause especially, I mean, you're from Peckham, <clears throat> you didn't grow up with a lot, mm. and you're gonna have kids. You have kids now. Is it, you know, it can be tempting, I reckon, to oh, just be like, bad. here's the, like, you know, just well, have it, in it. Because it's mad tempting, man. Yeah. It's, you know what the mad thing is? Is when you're, you lot will be the same. You do all this work here to give your kids, to give them everything, to give them. So that's what you think initially. I just want to be able to give my kids. They need something new, I'll give it to them. If um, all of a sudden your kids are born and you're, and you're sitting there thinking, if I keep giving them, where's the where's their hunger gonna come from? Like my two boys wanna be footballers. Hmm. Like Simba. if I keep just yeah, you, you know, yeah. Minute, but if I keep just like giving them stuff and making it sound easy, and because the the football world now for kids growing up is such is so full of cotton wool, mm. protected, um, everything's organised, everything's set out for them, laid out for them, so it makes it everything so easy. When there's gonna be that time of disappointment or down times, they ain't gonna be conditioned and ready to be able to deal with it so mm. do you know what out of curiosity because that's a not to move completely away from parenthood because that's a really interesting point and i really want to get your opinion on this i saw a stat the other day that says that this is the youngest the premier league's been mm. ever mm. but it's a good point you make i do think kids are wrapped in cotton wool in the game but then we've got more young players involved in the game mm. have they got the balance right or are we walking to an age where in which, you know, some of the younger players are going to make demands of 300 bags a week and they're 19 years old of like five appearances? Like, is yeah, that if any- they can get it, I'll make them right. I would have done it. Yeah. Mm. If I was a kid and then I had the opportunity to earn that 100, 200 grand a week after five appearances, as much as it is, you feel on one hand it's wrong, if I'm in their shoes, I'm doing it. Mm. If I think, if, mm. if they're going to give it to me, do it. What's the long-term damages of that? Because you know what it is? It's like, I reckon from a distance, I could say to someone, do it. But if it was actually my child, I'd be so concerned with that. That's a lot of money for someone so young to handle. I'd be concerned with, I wonder what's going to happen after a year, yeah, a year and a half. Yeah, but that's when it comes down to the management and the team around that kid. Okay. That's what, I, I, that's what I'm more concerned about. The club and the management. Yeah, give the, if you're going to give the kid 50 grand a week after a few appearances, fine. But then you've got to put something around him to protect him. 
Like, are you going to let him have access to all of that? Mm. Are you going to school him on yeah, how exactly. to spend it or yeah, how yeah, to yeah. invest it? Like, so if he's got all of that around him, and that's I'm, I'm involved in an agency. I'm like a mentor ambassador for a new era an agency. Um, they manage managers, players, retired players, etc. But that's the only reason I got involved because that the, con- the the concerns and the attention to the detail that around the contract, not just the contract, get the kids the best deals, but around that is the, is more important for me. Are mm-hmm. they protected? Are they understanding like how much money they're getting and what that can do for not only them, but generations? Can they change the next generation of their family? Like, <laughs> That's important. amazing, bro. So, mm-hmm. but, but going back to what you're saying about the kids, it's like, I take my boys sometimes back to work my estate. And yeah, it's different now. They used to be, because I say to them, there's all these kids on my estate, come out the door, there's always 15, 20 kids about, always can rustle up a few to get a game. Someone's always got a ball. I never had a ball, couldn't get a ball, but my mate always had a ball, the, the family downstairs, knock the door. They're not out, but borrow me a ball, please. Uh, come on, man, please, boil the ball. Then all of a sudden, there's about 10 men out there playing yeah, football. That's lit. Yeah, but yeah, now, you go there, it's a ghost town, bro. Bruv! It's a ghost town. That is, I was in New York. Every, like, every part where they've put a bit of grass is full. Mm. Look, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why it's like that here. Like, New York, there's obviously New York, like, the football there isn't mm. that big. Obviously, they've got big immigrant communities that love football, the, mm. the, the Mexicans, the whatever, whatever's around there, but they're active. Bro, mm. I wonder what it is here that the kids aren't out. Like I go to the park sometimes to the playground, etc. There's no one really no, there. There's, there's it no seems one. like the community spirit in London or the UK. I don't know. It's I like, don't know what it is. But, people but aren't my, out. Yeah, my kid said to me, Dad, this ain't what you explained. Oh, wow. This ain't like, where's everyone? Oh, shit. And I was like, I had no answer. I was like, whoa, I, I don't know. if Everyone's at home with the iPad, maybe. I don't know. Like, But yeah. maybe there's so much... There's so much more information for people now that they're hearing about all of this crime, all of these mad people about that they're just going to their kids. You ain't going out, out of my sight now. So you're going to stay in. I put you on an iPad and you just chill with me. I know where you are. There's no problems. I Maybe think it's I- the conditioning as well. I'm thinking about right now, like culture is something that I think is neglected within the UK quite heavily. So growing up and playing football with a sign that says no ball games allowed is very much a part of my culture growing mm. up. Very much a part of what I imagine yeah, Vujic's yeah, culture. Yeah, yeah. It's only now become a thing. I see like an advert the other day, no ball games allowed. And the guy's like, yeah, man, this JJ. is what I see. Bro, I'm thinking to myself, bro, like that, first of all, that's something we've done in the Puma advert from mm. when we made a trainer. Like we made that a mad iconic thing. Mm. But before all of that, that is so embedded in so much people's culture. Mm. It just takes someone like Harry Kane to come out and say that. Mm. That's what I was involved in because I just think that part of culture is neglected so much that they say, nah, we have to make it better because there's other footballers that grew up in other circumstances and there's high profile players. Mm. The players that grew up like that, they're always a little bit like this or, do you know, we mm. kind of neglect us and make it like it's Ian Wright and then Ian Wright's a problem in the public and so on and so forth. They associate that type of surrounding for that type of player. Mm. But if they actually celebrated that and celebrated that within the culture and said, you know what, this is the estate where Rio Ferdinand came from and these are all the problems he had and sort of kept it the way it is and Mm. glossed it up, not too much, just a little bit. Mm. I think people would appreciate it more. Like Mm. Zlatan's got a place in Malmo that me and Vuj went to uh, in 2015. Mm. 2015. The estate is... A little bit glossed up, but it's not far removed from what it was. Mm. So now knowing that I'm a young kid playing where Zlatan played, mm. I'm gonna be so excited and gassed. I just don't think that the, the UK celebrates any areas like that within working class areas. They just rejuvenate. You know I think it would be cool. Glossed up, and that's it. Yeah, I think it would be cool. Obviously, the <laughs> council, the council probably won't do that, but I think they do Money, that. Man. Like in yeah. in Paris, it's very big. Like Mbappe came from the estates. Yeah, and I think I don't know if they got like a graf- I've got a big painting of him on the wall of like on the back of an estate or something. Like I mm. think we need to really. Put, put these highlights on I don't, I know, I don't know how they get the funding or if we can do that privately or whatever but I as a child I definitely would have loved to have seen someone local on the side of a building so every time you step out you go yeah it's possible Bro. do you know what I'm saying like in, in an estate of Beckham why not have Rio's face on the of side course. or Ian Wright where, where he's from mm. put it on, on the side of, just saying like on the estate so when these boys girls whoever's coming out they like go mural wow, wow. Thing. mural well, yeah do murals like, like, I don't know it's, it's, like in Brazil they do it to everyone yeah. saying when they come everyone, from the favelas it's like, is, what, what is the reason why the it's more like what's the reason why there aren't the kids ha- on the on the streets is it because the hanging about on the streets is a negative thing now yeah. whereas when we were younger we hung about like, yeah. like you, you played football or you whatever but you hung about for the majority of the day but just getting jokes and messing about but hanging about now is frowned upon 
But it's a generational it thing. Weird. I hung about because I saw the older generation hanging about. Now the generation looking at the older generations in their ass on the YouTube. So it's like, well, that's what I'm going to do then mm. because that's who we're sort of learning off. That's why I think Vuj's point is really integral. That if you knew that Rio Ferdinand used to kick football in this spot, it doesn't have to be a Rio Ferdinand it memorial. Weird, it though. needs to be a surprise. Like you just come to the estate and then there's like this picture of Rio Ferdinand and a bit of information about him. And that's all it is. Mm. It's not like it's a, then it's like subtly there. You're just like, wait, Rio's from this estate. Mm. And then you look at the estate and you're like, real, real, real. Mm. All of a sudden, your view of this estate has changed. Mm. Your view of success and how to get there has changed. So much things change within your mind that you begin to say, I might ever send my kids there. I might send my kids there. You see see the pathway. pathway. And I just don't think that people see that pathway. I do the murals, man. Bruv, just get loads of... Can you, paint? Areas. can you spray? Can you spray? Can you paint? No, but I, I, <laughs> you know, I, you know what I saw as well. I saw there was a AJ <clears throat> Tracy mural. I saw that in Tottenham, and no, but this is what I've, what confused me. I was like, that is sick. He's holding like a little goat in it for the promotion of his mm. album. I was like, yeah, this looks sick, and it made me, you know, even inspires me to be like, oh, I need to be, ah, oh, I can look at like do some more creative stuff. Mm. Just just seeing that, and then like a week later, it was gone. I'll be honest with you. Which, I wasn't why don't they keep it? Don't say, no, like, no, they I don't shouldn't like keep that there, though. This is why? what I mean. For the simple fact that AJ Tracy's from a, a part of oh, London. No, no, no. My point is about the mural thing. No, it? of course. But when I saw that, because I remember that, that was right next saying. to Tottenham Swan. So Tottenham yeah, Swan yeah, used to be yeah. here. They changed it to a pizza go-go or a Domino's pizza. So it's across the road from the, the, the phone, not the yeah, phone, yeah, the yeah. shop garage, the bus garage. We're going to say he's and from I saw, West. Like, yeah, he's from West. He's got a song called Labrick Grove. I think this culture is so important to me. It's like, Present somebody in their environment yeah, yeah, and let even if yeah. they're a Spurs fan, it doesn't there's no rules. Give him the Spurs shirt and let him promote his album in Labrick Grove where he grew up. So there's like a 50, 60, 70 year old woman who walks past and remembers him when he was just a little boy. Mm. Her view now is like, oh, I just thought he was any estate. Yeah. You look what he's doing. No, definitely like, put I was thinking locally, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but my man. wider point is of course just to it. see these murals in areas which people view negatively. I, for, for one, have lived always in a city, London, 13 different areas. Mm. Like, I've never had a problem. Mm. And there's so much actually, there's actually so much love in what people call ends or whatever they want to call it. Mm. I find there's so much love there. I actually struggle. I don't like it in Kensington, personally. Mm. For me, like, when I go there, I feel a bit like, there's no smiling, there's no, there's nothing, there's no, there's, no plus, there's no community spirit. That's and, what it is, you know. But then again, it's, it's like, why aren't the kids right out? I don't know, maybe, like I said, is it maybe the iPad thing? Is it that, that, I, th- I, I, th- I reckon think in this country, yeah, and we it's, don't it's celebrate the social media. It. In the States, yeah, for example, yeah, one of the it's... most iconic places in LA for me was when I watched um, White Men Can't Jump, that basketball court. Yeah, the court, yeah. Bro, 2013, when I've gone there, I've gone to the basketball court and I'm like, Vuj, this is where they shot White Men Can't Jump. Like, mm. why am I that excited about going to LA, something mm. that I'm not really connected to? It's because they celebrate that, like, they celebrate them places within their like, you era. you see, like, Top Boy. Yeah. You see Top Boy now. You need, you need like, a, a, like a, like an iconic piece of creative work to be able to do that, though. Yeah, like for instance, that's Top Boy, true. if they're filming in a certain estate, that estate becomes iconic. Right, it's that, and all of a sudden, it's like, look, even friends, you look at Towie, there's like, as much as you might call it bubblegum TV or what, there's like coach loads of people that fly over and go and do coach tours around Essex. But do you know why though? <laughs> it's called The Only Way is Essex. When I watch Top Boy and all these shows, the one thing they lack is identity. Mm. It's like they're afraid to go, this is an estate mm. in South London and gigs used to live there. And I'm not asking yeah, them to you do see, that. You, you, you but see, I would be gassed yeah, like, what? Yeah. You mean that? You mean gigs? D gigs? He no lived there. fucking he lived way. There. He lived here. Yeah, exactly. That's what now, my, my if, kids would love that. Bro, if I live next door, I'd be like, bro, I'll tell everyone, fam. You know yeah. what? I can't lie. If a man lives next door, get... but like, I've heard some stories about so, still bangles. He used to mm. live in an estate, yeah, and like Idris Elba was across the road, and Wiley was there. Mm. When I've heard this, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. why is this not documented and celebrated and talk? Yeah. Like, why don't we celebrate these yeah, things? We're putting it out into the universe. Maybe Hopefully, there's some yeah. sort of series that, that can be done. But there is a good one. The next one, I want to see it. Um, something blue, something. Film coming out. Is it about Peckham boys and and ghetto boys? Like from from Peckham, from where I'm from. No so way. There were gangs when we were younger. Two different gangs going at it. But I obviously remember all this when I was younger. But there's a film coming out now, so that could be something that's quite where I you go be. right. That's that's the estate. Oh, I see that. That it's like it's a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, coming more, out and just getting I think more sharing, exposure but sharing yeah. more positivity I think more, is also yeah, important about the, about different communities mm. in, in London 
Yeah, because there obviously there is the there the are good stuff stories that come from these stories, but they're, they're not they're not stories that the the, the wider press or media want to promote or and talk how, about. Yeah, and how do you feel about the wider press or media? Obviously, you've been through Boy. a lot of criticism. Obviously, you've made mistakes here and there. Mm. It seems to be in a. It's always been a strange place, I think, from people. From I've always felt like a scapegoat for yeah for the media, my, yeah, for yeah. my generation. I always felt that I've always felt that I was always um, punished mm. and made an example of for everything and that might have been because I was too I don't know I might have been a bit brash when I was younger said and done things and didn't think about the consequences enough maybe mm. or I don't know because I was I don't know man I was just I've always felt that like punishments that I had were more severe than anyone else I was all it was just like I've, I've I always accept the responsibility. That's one thing I always hold my hands up and say, you know, I've made a mistake. But then it would always lead me to read. These guys are treating me different. That's yeah, all I ever thought, especially with punishments. Like, what, the punish, what I've just I done agree. isn't as bad, it was, or was as bad as what someone else done or is on the same level as what someone else done over there a year ago, six months ago. But you're treating me like this. Wow. Right. So then it led me to believe like, or think about why? Is it my colour? Is it my background? Is it the football club I'm playing at? Like, what what is it like? And you'd think that because I play at a big football club, you get a, a bit of protection, maybe. No, I was getting, I got some some licks were. Yeah, because obviously we did, we spoke to Ian Wright. He mm. spoke about very similar issues. Black footballer, he's been killing it the same as you. And then you had Raheem Sterling. Although I think he got. We all know the criticism he was getting from the mainstream media is just yeah. Mad. insane. But I think it's just, they always do it in like a very nuanced way, so it's not overt. It's it's always that one. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, they, 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 yeah, they leave the, they leave they leave the, a little gap in the in the, in the where they can go where they can flip it on you and you go. Oh, so I didn't mean it like that. You, you, okay, I understand now. They they make you almost feel guilty for saying what you said. Bro, Do you know what it's mean? fucked, isn't it's it? It's mad, like... Because then Raheem's flipped it, I feel. I feel like Amazing. Raheem's such an integral, really well, integral figure in flipping that narrative. And then almost it's been funny to observe those media outlets that before would have been criticising him are now like, Raheem is our... You know, they're kind of positively going that. And it's just so strange these dynamics that it, it definitely seems to have a, a, a to do something with with obviously ethnicity and and background 100 percent. I, I think it's always easier to, to he highlighted a couple of good points the one about the house mm. one kid and then phil foden the way they reported on the two madness, boys buying madness. houses was massive because raheem's such a lovely guy mm. yeah like you can't for him to be painted with a bad boy image because mm. he wears a chain or two is the most it's not even subtle anymore no it's because raheem you know what it is? People are scared of what they don't know. So Raheem, you didn't know Raheem. Yeah. When he was at Liverpool and when he signed for City, did you really know him of a personality wise? If you didn't I know, him, interviewed him. him. No, I'm, I'm talking poets. Oh, okay. You interviewed him. Yeah. But I'm saying if you're looking at him, you'd think he don't speak. Some people taking that quietness and not talking for ignorance and arrogance. So I think a lot of people were looking at him like that. And then added to that is his background, etc. And they think, you know what? He, they make a, a decision about him straight off the back of that. And he's not said a word yet. So how can you judge someone without hearing them or, sp or, or speaking to them or finding out a bit more about them, what's behind mm. that exterior? So it's, it's, I feel we was judged unfairly 100%. And people do that sometimes. And I, out of, I, don't, I don't really know my understanding. So I'm going to paint a picture of him. And that's why I feel social media, that's why I got in social media at the beginning. Because I had these idiots behind a desk painting a caricature of me mm -hmm. in the media mm -hmm. and saying I'm like this I'm like that he's like that they don't know me and I was thinking right who's the guy I look at his name and I think I don't even know this guy I never met him in my no, life never know. interviewed me who is this mm -hmm. guy mm -hmm. so social media became so a powerful sad. thing for me like that's why I always thought I'm going to talk on, on, on social media and give kids young people different generations a, a, a clearer picture of what I'm, listen it ain't everything of who I am but it's a, a clearer picture that I'm shaping rather than someone else is shaping. Yeah. Do you know what? One thing I want to touch upon is that you spoke about Raheem Sterling and a hundred years from now, Raheem Sterling is going to be one of the most integral figures when it comes to black, young black boys within football in the UK. That is just 100% a fact. But I think that's even more echoed because it's a social media era. So because of that, things are shared more frequently. Mm. There's one thing that you've done that my dad said, no one's going to appreciate 
until racism becomes so much of a problem, it's given to the individuals that actually suffer it to solve it. Right now, the people going through racism are not the people trying to solve it. It's a bag of ad agencies and YouTube mm. channels that are getting a bit of money to go and do this kick it out nonsense. It's all absolute bollocks to me. One of the things that you've done, which was integral, and I remember my dad made everyone watch Match of the Day. He made everyone in our house watch the Match of the Day. He's like, if you ever want to watch something good, you should watch this tonight. And it's when yourself and Anton didn't wear this T-shirt that every footballer had to wear across the country mm. and you decided not to wear it. The question I've always had and I've always wanted to ask you was, bro, the know-how, why did you make that decision right there and then? Why did you know that was the right decision to make so young, especially <clears throat> surrounded by a bag of people, like you said, don't know. Mm. So they don't understand. So they come to their own conclusion. You're a rebel. You don't want to listen to nobody. You have to deal with all of that Rio mm. and you still did it. Yeah. Obviously, my brother went through a situation, isn't it, with, yeah. um, uh, with racism and it was dealt with like I can't I would love to swear but it was dealt with poorly yes like, I agree disgracefully swear the, here, way, but the way yeah. it was dealt with was, <laughs> yeah. was very poor in, in my eyes and so I felt like see if, when you have an issue like that that came came up here yeah, yeah. Um, a racist issue the likes of kick it out on show races and the red card this is what you're here for. These moments, this is your time to ring the bell and go, boom, this is now, we're going to go in and act. And they didn't do that. And I remember my mum saying to them, you put on a t-shirt and walk into court with my brother, with, with my son. Put on the kick it out t-shirt and walk into court with, with my son now. You ain't taking sides. You walk in in the middle on your own, just walk in. But you're going into this court case and kick it out of there. Show people. Mm, yeah, we can't humming and in. all right so when I knew from that day when my mum told me that I just knew I can't wear that t-shirt and the problem was it was a miscommunication between Sir Alex Ferguson and me yeah he came out in an interview on the Friday before the game on the weekend and said they asked him are all your players going to wear the shirt knowing that obviously my brother's been in this case I didn't tell anyone I wasn't wearing a t-shirt but he said, obviously, he said, he's the leader of our, of our team of Man United. Yeah, of course my players are wearing it. I've never had a problem before. They're going to wear it. And I, I didn't know he'd done that interview. I just went into the game. And if, in, when you go in the change room, all the shirts are up. Your training kit to go out for the warm-up and the kick-it-out shirt with T-shirts on, on your, your peg. Everyone normally puts it on. So I didn't say nothing to no one. I just went to go out to the warm-up. I remember Albert, the kit man, famous in Manchester. He's a nice, great guy. Oh. He come up to me, son you got to wear the shirt. Put the kick out shirt on. It's there. No, I'm not wearing it, Albert. What do you mean? Oh, the gaffer's going to kill me. you got to put it on. you got to put it on. I've got to, I'll get these and I've got to deliver it to the players. you got to... So, Albert, move. I ain't wearing the shirt. And I end up getting like a bit upset. Listen, just come out. I don't want to talk. To, don't work. Whatever the manager says, I'll deal with the manager. Or you can talk to me. I went out. Obviously, he's gone and told the manager which he had to. I come in. The manager knows that's going to be a story. And he went mad, boy. <laughs> the hairdryer came out like serious. Oh, you obviously because he sees it as a disrespect to him. Oh. I've told the world you're going to be wear everyone's wearing a t-shirt, but through lack of communication, he didn't know my my point of view. Now, if he'd spoke to me on the Friday before the press conference and said, "Real, obviously this is a bit of a contentious issue. Are you going to wear that t-shirt?" I would have told him then, no, because I don't believe in them. I don't believe in that organisation. I don't believe they acted the right way when a big case came about and I don't really believe in what they're doing this is so that's it simple as that and if you don't I know for a fact Gaffer if you didn't believe in something you wouldn't do it but because he didn't I went out there and obviously all the for all the craziness started coming in the media saying oh, I, we have, I got called everything a rebel like you said a disgrace I had black people black players ex-players coming out and saying this is disgraceful how can he do that I was thinking wow you guys are Really? Is this how you're moving? I can't believe it. In the hood, we so rated you, though. I, can't I, I lost a lot of <laughs> That's respect. That's what I'm like. But I lost a lot of respect for people who I respected at that time from the way they reacted to that situation because that's a moment where I've just believed that, listen, you all knew what happened. You all knew everything behind the, what was going on. It was very public. It was there for everyone to see, yeah? Very public. So for how people were trying to say that, like, I was a rebel or I was I was out of order or wrong for doing what I, I couldn't I couldn't understand it and f the mad thing is this is why Sir Alex Ferguson is the man because 
he he fined me two weeks' wages that on an instance there on the spot. And I remember after the game, he came in and said, "Lucky you won today, because we won." I was thinking, "Well, we better win because he's going to come down again on me." So we won, and then the next morning, I went into his office early to go and speak to him about it. And said, "Listen, Gaffer, I let like," and he's he, the way he spoke to me there, man. I would have run through a brick wall. I'd have done it anyway, but I'd have been set on fire and everything, and run through a brick wall for him because he said to me like, "Listen, my only mistake." And he spoke to his wife, he said, the only mistake that she said, she's told him, he said, she's told me this, <laughs> that you didn't speak to the kid before you went into the press conference. If you'd spoke to the kid before you went into the press conference, you wouldn't have left yourself open for embarrassment and for all of this that come with it. And he said, so that's my mistake. You're not going to be fine, it's fine. Well, he didn't say that, he said, that's my mistake. So I understand what you're doing, whether I believe in it or I understand it. That's not the conversation, but I respect your decision and what you're doing. You can go. So I went to walk out and said, boss, what about the fine? So he said, the fine. Okay, we waver the fine, it's fine. Okay, I said, thanks boss, cheers, and walked out. That but, is rude boy, Alex. But Ferguson. he was like, yeah. understanding, man. And it's just like, I lost so much respect for people, man. I just, in that whole situation, just like, I thought, boy, this is your time to speak, man. This is your time to come out. And phew, there was a lot, like, that's what I'm saying. It's Brit. Like I remember it like it was yesterday. The, the one thing I can even say. Do you know to what? So you know what as well. Like yeah. you want me to wear this t-shirt. You didn't do nothing yet. But my mum's getting bullets sent to her house. My mum's getting her windows put in. Like you want me to wear your t-shirt. And you haven't said a word. You haven't stood that up. You haven't. You haven't done what, 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 what we asked you to do. Like one thing. And I'm not saying take sides. Yeah. I'm saying walk in and make people know that you are here. It's a big case, and you lot are standing up walking in. And it may, people might think, oh, wearing a T-shirt is only a little thing. If it's such a little thing, why do you have to wear it in the game, before the game? Why are you bothered that I wore it, didn't wear it in the, in the, in the pre-match warm-up then? It's a little thing, but it would have gone a long way. Mm. I'm telling you, it's not a little thing. That would have been it's, massive well, because, I, Vuj, imagine this. There is no, well, you know, there was no social media. There was nothing. No. Like, we had to sit down. We watched Teletext. Yeah. We watched Spot, so, um, Soccer Saturday, Gillette Soccer Saturday, just mm. earlier. And then we had match of the day. And the most disappointing thing for me now as an older guy watching that from the BBC coverage is the fact that, bro, the most important thing is the football mm. before anything. Why is the first story... Rio Ferdinand not wearing the t-shirt. Because even I then, said, th- what do you mean? Even mm. in that situation, though, for you to once again be scapegoated is like, it's twisted. It's mad. Like, where's your personal story? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're black, mm. and once a, like to me, it just doesn't like resonate. <clears throat> no, you can't critique yeah. a man who's personally, I think, made a decision but in his own then, personal. Then, you, then, like, it goes back to see what's happened with you, that with Copper. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Just let this play out. Sometimes, like this is a this is a social issue. This isn't for you to sit there and be the the the, the, the people that the authority yeah. on this because you don't even know how to run this. You're not dealing with it properly. Yeah. So the way you're dealing with it, what makes you the person who can have the authority on what's right and what's wrong if you're not actually making it making it any better yourselves? Yeah, no, it's very very true. It's, I mean, it's, there's so much stuff happening right now. I think like the whole judging people about what they've done in the past is, is ridiculous anyway as as imperfect human beings that we all are I think when you know someone's overtly a dickhead yeah overtly a, ra- a, sec- a, a, mm. a racist or whatever 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 is you want to put on it you can deal with that you mm. know it but I think when you know when you people have done stuff in the past and they come for you I just think that's that's just a, it's a social thing that's but you know bit... Raheem how he's been brave and what he's done yeah mm. and he's done it really well um I just think the football family c- can learn and take so much from the music industry because I see all these boys now that are coming out and doing well, yeah, mm. in the music industry. I know there's phone calls, bruv, I've got a video, come here video, please. Or let's do a little link up with this. Or yeah. They're all going, yeah, 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 cool, let's do it, let's do it. They're bringing each other together, yeah, and doing stuff and they've become such a movement that the charts, the, the Char- mainstream yes, media mad, isn't it? cannot deal with them. Do you know what I mean? H is just free. He's got three top ten hits at the moment in one, H one is time. Mad man! Like, who would have ever Shut thought up. that any little rapper would have been able to do that? Like, but but from England, but they're all coming together and each of them are shouting each other out, boosting them up, so amplifying all what they're doing. But I feel that in the football world, it don't happen. Everyone's so just concerned on what they're doing. Like, mm. how many people like a? There ain't no movement with the young footballers now. Because they're getting hammered by everyone. Ah, oh, the cotton wool generation, they're this, they're that. 
there's a there's a movement to be had with them that they can help <coughs> each other and, and paint a better picture for themselves mm. going forward. So you're almost saying like, I guess apart from the t-shirts and organisations who seem to all be in in a similar space together, yeah. where I've never really felt it's been tackled properly. I don't think you have. I don't think Poet has either. Mm-hmm. Even like you know the online campaigns where they put up a photo and it's like kick out racism. Get rid of that, man. And you're like, I don't trash. buy that. No, but it's like for me, <laughs> like because you're, you're serving that to your audience at the end of the day. So that's never gonna filter out to the wider, in my opinion, society who potentially don't like people of different races or are ignorant enough. Because I don't really even think these people know what they're doing. Mm. For you to have an opinion or a view like that, you just don't know. You have to be ignorant. But anyway, fucking. You're saying potentially moving forward to tackle it, it needs to be a movement of getting players together. And, and importantly, people... mixed. Mm, yeah. It can't be all, all just black boys talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like, like, we were talking before we come on here, but like, little Johnny and Steve in the front room with their dad watching the TV and seeing a black face trying to tell them that racism's wrong. And the dad's a racist guy. And listen, get that black this or the other off the TV. Don't know what he's, t- he's on millions. He shouldn't be arguing. He should be happy. He should be thankful he's here playing. Little and Johnny are hearing that from their dad. They're going to think, right, that's, that's ingrained in them now. But if they've got a face that they see and go, right, I can, that's my guy. And he's very similar to them in background and culture. And he's going, listen, and one of my teammates got abused racially and I, I, I was devastated. And I had to go and see him and I, I couldn't believe it. It affected me. And these guys are telling them stories and little Johnny and Steve, whatever their names are, are going, Ra, forget what my dad said because I, I, this is my guy. That's who I want to be. Mm. There's, there's a pow more powerful I agree. Uh, message I think, to send yeah. and I there's just a... think it needs to be done because a lot of the stuff you see that come out now that people are trying to talk to or, or say, why, why is there racism? This is how we combat it. It's black people saying that. I get it. That's one part of the argument. But you have to balance that with there is a someone who is of a different culture who gets affected too but also where is that racist guy that actually has been a racist or is a racist and tells you why he's like that tells you how he's like that why does he think like that or how did he change and come back around to being actually normal mm. so, it's a deep, even, so it's a deeper issue anyway. it's a deeper but it's a social thing yeah, isn't it? it ain't it's going to change thing. it but football is a powerful tool to help the change mm. but that, that it's, it's social. John Barnes is the best I've seen talking on it. Okay, well, that's like, a controversial football, one. I think a lot of people yeah. criticise him as no, well. No, from a football perspective, I, I, I like what he says because he, he, it ain't football. We've been fed all this rubbish for ages. Football's going to change racism. It can't change it. Mm-hmm. It's education. It's talking to a generation that are a lot younger and it's got that, you have to be, they have to be educated from, a lot, from an early age. Football ain't going to do that on its own. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah, it's a great that. tool to start to, to, to hit people with and to, to make their a voice for it but it ain't changing nothing on its own like that but then that's why I say don't you think Barnes is good tell me if you, what you think you know what I haven't consumed much of it neither have I but from saying. what I have seen I'm but not... I've seen him get critiqued quite a bit same but, here yeah. for me I think the biggest problem like I said I'm always going to say in this is how can the victims of racism not have a voice no no I said they can no no, no not they you. should no, I'm not saying I'm not saying you said anything. I'm oh, saying you're in talking general, about what you said recently. Okay, yeah, like yeah, in yeah, general, yeah, yeah. Like, for the victims of racism to not have a voice, then we're not speaking to the people that are affected. If we're not speaking to the people that are affected, then what's the point of it in the first place? You're just speaking to a bag of people that haven't really been through much problems that are like, yeah, that's wrong, and then build a connection based upon a Instagram video or maybe something they've seen from Raheem Sterling. But I'm talking about you see the people that went to Sunday football like myself and got told you're the best colour team. Like, where the people that need to be talking about mm. it? You're the person that needs to be talking about it, real. The people that have to deal with it, and then we have to educate the places that don't really have much black people. Because yeah, all see, of this is, is but, ignorance to a certain but extent. But that Sunday team, mm-hmm. where's, their, where's their platform to speak? Where is that, is that going to be amplified? The way it's amplified, I think, is using the Raheem Sterlings, using the likes of One you guys, using to go and tell them stories. But they need to come to... Remember, the thing is, football is such a big place, it needs to feel connected, and the biggest problem is the fact that grassroots is here, and then Supreme Football is all the way up here. Whereas in Brazil, under-14s can go and watch football for free. Mm. So that means grassroots football's here, but then football's kind of growing with it at the same time. So as an mm. under-14-year-old, nothing to do on a Saturday, I can go and watch a bit of football. 
Whereas over here, we're out price so and so forth that racism becomes an issue because you don't even feel as a working class boy, regardless of class or anything, even becomes like a socialist, you don't feel a part of football. Yeah, but that's why now the young kids are going to watch all these YouTube teams. Trust me, because they the feel a part of that. Got, yeah, SC Dons. Yeah, SC Dons. Dons. Baby, think, baby squad, like all these boys, they've got chunks. big followings That's going to shift things, I think. 100%. I think slowly, the, the, it's obviously rising to the surface now. My kids watch that. Yeah, their games and more their stuff more than they watch professional football sometimes. Like, banging, and banging, I'm glad because banging. they're all about inclusion. They're all about community. Yeah. They're building things, and it's and I can see now back in the day why people go go support your your local team because your local team actually has a better feeling than this corporate VAR nonsense that I I'm think watching on SC TV. Essie Dons, Essie Dons are them. doing more to kick out racism out of football and maybe even in society in general than any of these organisations. How, how, how? Because they're a team that's predominantly black mm -hmm. from obviously South London. Don Strapsy's there as well. They're, they're, you can see they're all friends. And sometimes when you watch the games that they're playing at, it's a predominantly white crowd. So they're Not always, but you're watching the boys and you're going, these are young white boys potentially watching them in S6, wherever they might be watching from. They're not going to then go online and, and, and start chatting shit or see someone and, and think shit they're going to go these guys are actually sick and if they're kind of integrating it, as you said from the bottom from, from society starting at a young age is how you get rid of the bullshit because not from you go on the BBC and you go show it the red card uh, like that's done mm. after 10 seconds or like the campaign of a month that's done but these guys are doing football games on, on YouTube every week mm. And they're not making no overt points, but just for you to visibility see that inclusion and see the crowd respecting them and, and seeing that these boys are doing something good for themselves. Mm. And they're not from, from great backgrounds, but they managed to, to, to create something out of nothing. I think mm. that's just an extremely it. powerful thing. I love it. Like, that's where the creativity that's coming out right now, I think, on YouTube is, is so refreshing and so engaging. Mm. I just love seeing it because, as you said, like people are getting top tens now. Like music black culture the the music is 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 doing so well it's beautiful to see from someone that used to watch it on link up tv grime daily where if you got a million views mm, i remember flying, when like krypton Conan got a million views we yeah, were, everybody was like what a million views but you know what you've now you're hitting there, 25 mil but 30 you, mil so mm. we're hitting bigger bigger audiences but you're touching on it there it's celebrating it i think we don't celebrating. celebrate yeah, our yeah, culture yeah, yeah. enough and that's why i said it's great it'd be great for me to go back to certain places in Tottenham where I've grew up and see a poster of Wretch and see something of Skepta because all of a sudden this gentrified area of Costa Coffee's next to Costa Coffee and then inside Costa Coffee is a Starbucks. This gentrified For area me, it, yeah. begins to have Bro, a bit of cultural character. identity no, and character. The identity, yeah. And I think that's you really You have to important. celebrate the icons. I mean, that, I'd love to see that more. It's celebration of, of cultural icons and people that have done well from their area. I'd love to, to see it. That. It doesn't need to be a big thing. It doesn't need to be a big but thing. You know what? Like, no, for me, it's like, no, make it a big thing. No, bro. it needs to be something embedded in the culture. It needs to be like seeing the police station on the high road or like seeing the off license on the high road or seeing the lonely pop lady it needs yeah. to be embedded in culture like that so it's yeah. not like oh my god it's more like wow he's from around here it's so embedded in you that when a man goes did you know Rio's from Peckham yeah everyone knows that have you seen the poster like it's just normal mm. that's how I, I want it in my, know, in my head I can I can just see a mural I, I would love even like a I'm little... gonna get someone to do it on my own do it right, from. Bro, back... why not but you know what just to go back to the point like it's like about um, John Barnes and I can see I'm, I just thought now that the way you lot are going I don't really Check for what he's saying. Yeah, I don't really. Is when he called out Jaden, isn't it? Talking about talking about saying he don't understand racism or something like that. If he he's not the one yeah, feeling yeah, the yeah, effects yeah. of racism, he should go and talk to the kids that are. He said that. That's what I thought. That's what you thought about John Barnes. You must have heard. I didn't hear about that. No, no. So just, yeah, just I, I, just I, I just think, yeah. So he he said something along the lines of you can get online something along the lines of like Jaden. It's easy for Jaden to talk about racism. Who's Jaden? Jaden Sancho. 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 Yeah, Sancho. Yeah, it's, it's, it's easy for him to talk about racism. He's a professional footballer. How about the young kids that are receiving racism on a daily basis, haven't got opportunities and jobs and whatnot? I understand that, yeah. John Barnes is very crazy for that. He doesn't know Jaden Sancho's no, no, cousin. But what I'm he saying, doesn't know him, like. But what you don't need to do, he, what you don't know is that he don't need... Like, but That just goes against what you're trying to achieve by yeah. calling out a young black footballer who's trying. Because, yeah, yeah, listen, yeah, yeah, Jaden's yeah. young, yeah? He, he's In his own mind, he'll be saying... I'm I'm doing something. I'm standing up for this. I'm yeah. speaking out and about you know racism. What? Yeah, bro. But you, and if John Barnes thinks that's wrong, that's fine. Ring him. You know what ties me? You know what I'm very tired of. Media. And I think I, I am tired people. of seeing the young black boy image portrayed negatively. Yeah, I'm tired. It's boring I am now. I'm bro. Like having grown up around obviously poet and will living in Wilsden, Acton. I've never encountered more love. Of course. Mm. 
I don't want to go into negativity. There's enough of the news around that. Mm. But I'm just tired of that image. And like, you know what I'm tired and of? fuck all these papers, bro. I'm, I'm just, tired just, of... We need to, I don't know, can it just be... Can, I don't know. It's obviously changing. Like Raheem Sterling, I think, is shifting it. Yeah. But I just said, like, you went through it. Ian Wright went through it. Raheem Sterling went through it. It's a pattern. Like, it's clearly even... It's not even at the bottom. It's even in, in the institutions. Clearly, they don't even know what they're doing. And they're promoting it in a very, very kind but, of... But I think, that's where I think... That's where I think it becomes a movement, though. It's yeah, only I a movement it's getting that it, can it's change getting it. it. Like, that's why I look at music now and just think, right, I agree. they're doing it so well. Look, you can't... No one can say nothing to Stormzy. No one can say nothing yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, gigs. Yeah. They can't well, say nothing to Skip. Because true. these guys... Yeah. Of the foundations of what they're doing is a whole movement underneath. Because no. if you say something to him, they're going to come out and speak. In the football fraternity, if you're suffering or you're getting hammered by anyone, you're doing it alone. Because no but one's coming is... out and saying anything and trying to protect you because they're thinking, I ain't affecting my situation for you. Let me show you how dangerous what John Barnes has done, how dangerous it is. And a lot of players do it to, even not even in racism, they just do it. A lot of older players. You need to understand when you played football, it was like 1970, 1980. Don't forget that Barnes was a bad man player. Barnes was a legend. He the goal scores for England. Of course, he was born in Jamaica, came over. But my thing is this. The times that he was going through racism, I have never heard about John Barnes speaking about racism. He's played in Scotland for Celtic. He's managing Celtic. He's played for Liverpool. He's played for England, representing at a time where being black was very, very difficult. I've never heard him speak about no, it. No, Barnes has been an advocate I have to, talking I've about never heard racism. Him speak about. I'm not saying he hasn't. Said, I have never heard him speak about it. So this is my problem. Even if you do speak about it, you need to understand that racism and dealing with it in 1980 or 1990s is mm. completely different to the millennial. Mm. So to look at a professional footballer in this day and age, 19-year-old Sancho playing in Germany and say to him, what do you know, you're a professional footballer? You've eradicated his whole life. Mm. Like, all he does is play professional football. Yeah, he comes I home, agree. he trains in his house, trains like in his that. garden, like that's, that's, trains in the shower. Triggered. Like, it doesn't... It triggered me for the simple fact that I know some of Sancho's family. So I know for a fact Sancho will definitely have a bit of experience of racism in some capacity. Mm. So for you to look at his professional status and say, what do you know? Bro, it happens far too much. A lot of individuals that are in professional worlds have still gone through real life things with human beings. So to eradicate that because of someone's professional or social class or money, like it proper, proper irritates But that's for me. the ed- older generation of player to go and help educate the next generation like that. Call phone him, him. Go like and see said, him, phone right, him. And say, listen, bro, the way you, talk, you spoke there, I think you're a bit off key there. This is how you maybe want to address it. Do you understand from what I'm saying to you now? And Jaden is someone who, 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 who want to learn. He will learn from that. He will, he will need, he needs to learn from that. But he's, he's speaking, trying to yeah. help a situation. But he's young. He's going to be naive. He's going to make mistakes. Help him, man. No, we need, we need at least he's trying the right yeah. thing. So I'm, like, I'm back in To central. be speaking at 19, brother, about stuff like that, you're you're doing well, mate. Because I know a lot of men at 28 weren't doing it. Yeah. <laughs> But it seems like the conversations are happening. Obviously, yeah. it's, it seems yeah, like I it's... I just think more. I think there's I think, more highlights on it. I think before, so in England, what I kind of noticed, I don't know if, if you guys agree, they would... A lot of the media would always point outward. Like, even remember Russia. Obviously, I'm not saying that place is great. They go, oh, it's over there, it's over there. All the bad yeah. things are over there. It's, um, no, if you go to, like, over there is bad. Uh, this thing's happening and there's people murdering each other over there. But now I feel like it's like people are finally going, like, rah look at your own backyard mm. like in this country there's so many things that need to be sorted out and I feel like now it's like slowly coming like not slowly it's very fastly coming to the surface where people are realising yo there's issues here that mm. need to be sorted out and spoken social about social media does that as eradicated well, it? and yeah, social yeah, media as well you know. everything gets now is different to, to 10, 15, 20 years ago isn't it yeah. you can't hide now so it's like high, it's faster isn't it? I think yeah. things now move faster that's why I just it? think it's so powerful if it's, there's a, the young players now were to get together and just like have open conversations and be very very like they just back each other man because in my generation I think one of the things a big thing that was a problem is that there weren't one there wasn't the platforms in terms of social media to openly be able to back each other but when when shit hits the fans it's a certain situations there weren't that togetherness that was portrayed when there were negative situations a lot of the time or, or things that were going on it was like, you guys can do all that on your own, man. I'm not going to get involved. Yeah. Just, you could do that. Well, and one thing I will say, Rio, is like, a big point you touched upon was taking responsibility and celebrating. And I want to celebrate some of the things that you've done because we could talk about this all day, but there are some things that you've done for me. Like, I'm a match of the day fiend, bro. And I've watched a match of the day and thought, Rio Ferdinand, what a player. <laughs> like, <laughs> genuine, like, what a player. And... 
I would love to talk about some about that because you did take responsibility as a centre back. You did take responsibility as a football player and as a man, and it's full circle. So on the field, I mean, the best duo of Serbian and Jamaican obviously is me and Vuj. After you, like, <laughs> you have Vidic and Rio. Like, bro, what was that like? Because watching yeah. it, I can't lie, it was annoying, bro. Dominant you two were annoying. Force. That is long. Mm. If you two are playing, it's long. It's just long. Apart from Torres here and there, ripping them up. Yeah, up. Torres went mad at you lot a couple of times. Not me, bro. But yeah, it was Vida. <laughs> it was Vida. <laughs> Struggled against No, them. you yeah, know yeah, what? It's yeah. mad. I was talking to Vida yesterday yeah. um, about some stuff. I don't talk, we don't talk every day all the time, but when we do, it's just like, you're just back in sync, man. And that's yeah. the, 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 in sync is just the word. We're just on the same level, man. It's just, there comes a time, you meet someone and you, you go on a training pitch and you go on the pitch and it just happens. Like, That's yeah, like me and Poe and me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You, guys know what I'm about. you don't know what I'm chatting about. But it's yeah. like, it just kind of just, he knows instinctively where I'm going to go and what suits me, vice versa, the same. And like, I had attributes that were, I was really strong at. He had things that he was strong at and they just complemented each other. And I don't know, for a period of time, there was a period of time where I just felt, I did feel kind of invincible, like, and I just thought Jeez. no one was... That for I don't know how many players feel like that in their career where you go you know what I know you can't get past me <laughs> you ain't got you ain't and, and then and the security the is the security is if you do my brethren's there mad and if you get past him Edwin's there anyway so oh. like, I mean that's how that's how uh, but I always just uh, there's a time I had a, a time in my in my career where I just thought there's no man that's going to be able to get past me I don't care and then I got to a little bit older and then you got like Messi oh. <laughs> and them guys who just like, they're, 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 that team, that game, I don't even want to go into it, that was demoralising. But but again, like going back, when you look at it and you just think, oh, there's no better feeling for a footballer and you're standing in a tunnel and you've got other players on the other side and they're trying to psych themselves up and shout and scream about their team, but you know there's fear. I can see it in your body language. I can Madness. see it in your eyes. You don't want to play against me. I could see it or I'm going to give it my best shot today after the first five minutes when I've took the ball off you or I'm going to run out with a ball and pass it to someone you're thinking bloody hell same old story I'm going to go out to the left wing or to the right wing and stay well clear of them too was the tunnel kind of like a boxing press conference because the most fight like I said to you I honestly think any generation watching football now has been deprived of real war. They need, they, they, they need, they need the cameras in the tunnels, man. Bro, Arsenal versus Tottenham is the best tunnel incident ever in the <laughs> yeah, history yeah. of anything. Like, I'm even vexed that I missed a bit of it because I went to the toilet mm. and I'm like, "Get back here! Get back here! I've come back in." It's all popped off. Was that a common occurrence in tunnels, or was that just a really no? That it was just luck. They got that. It didn't happen all the time. Listen, there's been scuffles against us against Arsenal. Fight in the tunnel. Serious? Pizza gate. The Pete. Yeah. Uh, that must have been funny though. Like yeah. when you see pizza on Ferguson's face and Seth Fabregas <laughs> has thrown it. No, that no. is hilarious to me. I was walking down a tunnel, you have to remember. I was walking down a tunnel, yeah, yeah. with Soul. Where did the pizza even come from? Yeah, I don't going? know, yeah. I didn't see that bit, yeah. But I was walking down a tunnel and all of a sudden, as you come up with a big tunnel, yeah. you turn into a little narrow tunnel. About, I could touch both walls like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been, we've been there. We've been there so, we've been there. and then I've got to walk past Arsenal's change room to get to my change and went the other end, about 20 yards away. As me and Sol turned the corner, they're just like, you can see it just starting to go off, simmering, like, and security's in the middle. So I just run, jump through the security, and then come back, and I don't know, Loren, I, I had Loren like that, everyone was like, throwing punches, etc. Security was getting punched up. Royal Rumble. And then it just, Royal Rumble, that's what it was. But that was just like, it was funny, to be honest with you. It was mad, I was just thinking, rah, what's that? It's like, but then, there are loads of times. Robbie Savage got put on the floor <laughs> one time. Shout out to Robbie Savage, he's my boy. I, I love him now, but I hated yeah. him when I played. This is the thing. I, like I Robbie. hated Robbie Savage he's funny, when I played man. because he had a persona on the pitch. But that what he, what he needed to be like that on the pitch for him to be mm. successful. And he was a successful player. He played Premier League, yeah, yeah. done really well. But he got me sent off, man. He ruined, he blemished my whole career, man. I'm only sending off, but he was acting. No, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your other before. sending off should have been against Freddie Jumberg at nah, Old Trafford. Nah, but that's nah, another story. Nah. Vuj, I'll show you that. When we lost 2-0 to these lots, yeah, Freddie yeah. Jumberg is clean through. He's fouled him and pretended. Everyone's pretended, even though there's like 80,000 people here, that it hasn't happened. Did I get the ball? We can watch it now. Did I get the ball, though? We can watch I'm it I'm only right asking, now. did I get the ball? I can't remember. No. Not at all? Yeah. But ah! yeah I mean, you've got, ah! <laughs> he's got Freddie first. And I'm like... Oh 
Oh my god! The and then we've lost. There was contact with the ball and with the man. Oh, but Robbie mate. Savage, bro, funny. He ran past me and just bounced me with his shoulder. Bang! You know, like yeah, just in front of the tunnel. And then I just run down the tunnel. And next thing you know, he was just on the floor. But it was just like the tunnel situations are just like. They were part of it. It was unbelievable. That's Righty, mad. I remember Righty when he was at West Ham. We come, we're going. Razor, come on. Like, Righty was mad like that, <laughs> like funny. I remember Lundetvan must have said something and I just remember there's a, there's a picture somewhere. Righty's pinching him in his waist. I'm pinching him in his shoulder, like a corner off it, like mad, like. But Righty was funny with that type of stuff. Oh, Martin man. Darlin, brother, you went, yeah, oh, Darlene. Oh, the Danish You should have asked him about that. What happened with Darlin? I don't even know if I can say it. Is it mental? But he said, I remember my Martin said something about righty or righty's missus or something like that on the pitch. Like, you know, in, in school playground, like your yeah. mum jokes weren't on. No. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, from when yeah, someone yeah, said yeah, your, your mum, mom, it was, yeah, it was so game on, 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 isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's long. And it was that type of thing. I just I remember looking at righty and righty's head had gone. And Darlene was a away. bit big as well. Yeah. Was it Blackburn at the time, right? Yeah, yeah, Blackburn and Righty's head was gone. I remember in, a, in change room, the manager talking, Righty was just getting dressed quick. We come on, we're going to the bar. Who's coming? Because in them times in the bar, that's where everyone congregates. Players, con players, uh, players away. lounge. Yeah, players lounge, and we were away. Lit. Went up there. Right, he says, I'm waiting. What's wrong? So I'm waiting. Can't, can't have that. Right, so we ordered a couple of drinks, waiting, and then obviously Darling come in with his entourage. Right, he just put it on him. Where? Come outside. Come on. I can't lie to you. <laughs> mad, mate. Funny. Do you know what's so funny about Ian Wright? Imagine. But right here, yeah, there was Razor. Like, there was some big dogs in there. Razor's I was like a little scrawny 18 year old, like, standing there going, thinking, right, if it goes off, we've got a couple of big men with us, it will be all, will be all right. But Razor, Ruddock. West Ham looked decent this season as well. Not too bad. Yeah, I, mean, I, the watched them against, some, but... I watched them against yeah. City the first day the game, they got destroyed. But Completely. you could see something. The new sign in Haller Hall looks decent. Hmm. What about United struggling now, though? Obviously, you come from a golden generation. Mm. For you to be seeing what you're seeing now. Look how happy my man is. So am I. <laughs> for you to be seeing United at this yeah. level, yes. tell me, is it pain? Hashtag. Yeah, it's a pain. Because like, and the killer is, yeah, is I'm on TV having to talk about oh. this. How do you, it seems like so you're hiding time your emotions have, My time couldn't Gary. have been any worse. Yeah, because yeah, Gary Neville's well. not having it. He's, he's all over the shop. He's the counselling. Yeah. He's counselling levels right now. Yeah, BT yeah. are winning 11-8. Because yeah. of Gary Neville a lot and game Graham Souness. Why, why? There's a scoreboard that me and Twitter are keeping for performances of BT and Sky and BT are winning 11-8 right now. It might be 12-8. Why, why? Because Jamie Red because every time that they do something silly, I give a goal to the opposition. Oh, okay. So the, now it's 12-8. The reason why it became 12-8 is because Jamie Redknapp, he put on the television and goes, all right, so here's a corner flag and then circled the corner flag. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, I have it saved. I just thought to myself, well, if we watch football... <laughs> <laughs> we should know what the corner flag looks yeah, like yeah, and on yeah. top of that the corner flag's in the middle of the screen so it's like alright first of all there's the corner flag I said nah <laughs> one point to over there to BT but yeah, um, no, yeah. it's hard to, it's hard man because like I know a lot of the guys that are still there a lot of the staff shout out Jamie and you've got to be like you can't I can't lie I've got to say what I see mm. but I don't want to kill people it's like it, it, and that's not just the Man United I have to remember what it was like when I played as well mm. and I will say, if a situation a player could have done better, I will say it 100%. If that's a mistake, it's a mistake. I'm not going to sit here and try and dress it up, whether it's United or anyone. Or if I, if, you, if I know you like Pogba, if I think he's made a mistake, I, I'll say it. But it's just hard at Man United just watching the way it's gone. It's only been like seven, eight years. And you're just thinking, wow, the dec decline from where it was to where it is now is very hard to kind of sit there and critique but you have to do it. It's part of my job. Uh, obviously, right. it was Sir Alex. That's the that's the trickle down effect since he's left. It's just been like a Titanic, hasn't it? The man, like, and and you can't even blame David Moyes. The job was so difficult to come into. Yeah. Like it's such a difficult. Them shoes are too big to fill. Mm. Like so, and the problem is he probably he, he made some mistakes. He'd probably tell you that himself now. And you just think, wow, there, there's no recovery because people are going, the sharp like decline was like, whoa, can't have this panic stations, boom, gone. Mm -hmm. Moise is gone. Yeah. Bring someone else in. And after that, Louis Van Gaal and right. Mourinho, two of the most experienced manage, managers that you could have found in the game at that point, they, they, they surplus to requirements, gone. So mm -hmm. it shows you the job was very difficult. It shows you that, I don't know, 
it's obviously the management, but also the people that run the club as well. Everyone, the blame has to be shared. Mm. How difficult? Do you know what? I, I, be, I always speak about it with views, and I speak about it with writing quite a bit nowadays. Is I said it in the last podcast that people sometimes, because a person has 87 shooting on FIFA, you watch him in real life under any circumstances, Judging. you must always have 87 shooting. You can't miss an opportunity because when I play view in FIFA, you always score. If I do football manager, you always play well. I'm asking you, how difficult is it emotionally to be a footballer? Because I know at work, sometimes I, I can honestly say to you at Copa 90, bro, in the past year, the last year of Copa 90, that wasn't the best performance, that wasn't the best version of Poet that I would like to see. So if anyone critiques my performance, I can hold up my hand and say, I apologise, I understand why you said that. But due to my life at that present moment in time, everything I'd done became quite difficult. I probably wasn't the best father I could be. I probably wasn't the best friend, wasn't the best brother. Unfortunately, fortunately for me, I can say this here and everyone will have an understanding. Cool. Footballers have to remain quiet for so long and then I hear afterwards so many stories and I'm like, you mean you were going through that and then kicking football at three o'clock and everyone just expected you to just perform great because mm. you have 87 shooting. Like mm. how difficult is it day to day mentally to deal with all the pressures and then <clears> go and play a football game? Yeah, it is difficult. But again, it's the, it's the, that's the job you're in. Like mm. every job throws up difficult obstacles. Okay. So whether you're a lorry driver, it's going to be difficult at times and it's going to be hard and, and you're going to have to get through it. Football, people just expect you to be able to deliver and do it and suffer everything because the money you're getting paid. <sighs> so the money really down downplays everything else. You should be able to deal with that. If you're on science, like everyone's comment is, if I was 100 grand a week, yes. I'd take anything. <laughs> Yes. I mean, yeah, but it's not but the it case like when you're there. But it ain't Boy. like that. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So they, 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 they take away the human element of it. Everyone's a human at the end of the day. As much as you're built up to be a superstar and like this mega man because you're a footballer, when you strip it back, you're just a human like anyone else. So, But you don't get afforded the the, the, the time and the allowance of to have mistakes, etc. because you're on that money. But it is difficult. But listen, man, I'm retired now. And I wouldn't change it for the world, man. <laughs> I would go do football again and again and again because it's the best life, man. I got to places I never even dreamed of. Like, my passport was... I've had enough passports because I travelled everywhere. Like, and I saw places, I'd done things, I've been, been able to do more things in life than I could ever have imagined. And I'd done, every day I woke up, yeah? Imagine this. I woke up bouncing into training because... I was doing something I loved. How many people on this planet can actually sit there and go, you know what, I wake up every morning thinking, thank you, I'm doing something I love. It ain't, mm. Most people's job is a chore. Mashallah. So, like, I was, I, I find, I, I see it as being lucky. So when I see some players going, oh, this is so, uh, to, to be a footballer, uh, bro, is it really? Like, considering what else is going on I reckon they don't love there, it enough then, potentially, with that, with that mentality. That, that makes me feel they're the people to get into football for the wrong reasons. Like, I got into football, I would have played football for nothing anyway, but I was just lucky that this industry paid really well, so I was happy and lucky in that sense. But I played football, because we didn't have social media and all these platforms to see what football brings you, I didn't know what John Barnes was driving. I didn't care. I didn't know mm. what holidays he was going on and where he was do what he was doing, how much he travelled in the off-season. I didn't know, we, didn't, we couldn't see that. I wanted to know what he was doing training, really. I wanted to know what type how he was eating. I wanted to know, right, how did that game make you feel? How did you, what type of training did you do to be able to bend yeah. the ball over the wall like that? That's what I wanted to know. And that's what I used to go out and work on. Mm -hmm. And I used to try and find any little VHS video that I could find that would give me a little insight into what they do. Well, but I wanted to play like, because of football. For game. You love just for football, that was it. Yeah. So it's so much more pure. Unfortunately, the kids now get to see so much more. And a lot of the kids, a lot of people play football for what it can bring you. And sometimes a lot of the kids are playing football because their parents see them as a lottery ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If my kid makes it, I make it. We make it together. I'm 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 gonna be bathing in some nice cash. So it's a different different environment, different different time now, man. But the pressures are there. Listen, you gotta get your you gotta get yourself up on a like play Saturday, get yourself ready for the game. Win, lose or draw. Got a game in the Champions League on Tuesday, or you got a game in a couple, whatever on Tuesday or a league game Tuesday. So you ain't really gonna go out clubbing or nothing like that. Sit in your house, digest the game, think about it, whatever you mistakes or whatever you've done well. 
go into training, prepare for Tuesday, play Tuesday, get up again for Tuesday, on your way down now, bring yourself down on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of training, obviously all them days, get yourself up again on, on Saturday. It's just a roller coaster because you're winning and losing. How you deal with the, the, the ups and downs as well, like them type of things is hard and to stay focused for a season. The teams that win the league are the ones that remain focused throughout. That's hard, but it ain't, it's not not doable. It, mm. It's just hard to do that because you've got to set your mind up the right way to be mentally and physically in it every day. And they're the, they're the best team. That's why my team was, was the way it was because there was a relentlessness like every day. And it's mad, we got a group with a load of us who play, who, who chat on the WhatsApp and that, who played at United over the years. It's about 15, 20 of us in there. It's Wes Brown in there. Yeah, he's in there. Legend. Yeah. But it's, it's like we, we, we chat in there. <laughs> Overtime? No, he's not in there, no. Yeah, but we, we talk in there, yeah? And it's like... The last one, Ray Keane. Who? Ray Keane. No, Ray, Delete no, the group. Ray, Ray ain't got, the group. He ain't got WhatsApp, I don't think. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you see what it is, the mad thing is with that, is when people shout out and go, oh, what about when we used to do that? We used to have a game called SOCOM. Like a, it's like an old school type of Call of Duty. Mm. Teams. Six versus six. So 12 of the 22, 24 man squad that are traveling about. Bin man doing his bits. So 12 of the 24 man that was in the squad when we were traveling anywhere or in hotels were playing this game with us, right? Six v six. If we didn't have enough players, four v four. That game was the most intense game (laughs) And whoever won that would go nuts. I remember Fergie say, shut up, what's wrong with you lot? Calm down, you're on the bloody bus or on the train, calm down. We said, no notice taken, bro. Just, what? Get me up, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> Going, like, this is for about three, four years in our most successful period, Champions League, mm-hmm. back-to-back winning league titles. SOCOM was pivotal. Because was just trying to have a good it turn. showed you wow. team. Yeah. So I knew... From just playing that game, yeah, I knew, and I worked out, he's so he's he's selfish. He's a proper team player. I know in the game, and it started to relate to the game. Them attributes, them traits, I see in football. Oh yeah, yeah. And I used to judge people sometimes through that game, mm, and it mm. was ninety nine point nine percent of the time right. That's he's selfish. That's crazy, but that bro. game created the mad coming together of the team. Telling you, like, so that, that was played a, a big part as well. Massive, part of obviously the magic massive. in the team and so. When people talk about, oh, let's do a team bonding thing. Sometimes something simple like that brings a team to united together. Can you get that? Because I got a couple of men at Arsenal. I'll give that to you know like that. <laughs> because we can profit from some bonding. Yeah, I think that, that. is there too much ego in the game now? You reckon ego and distraction? What do you view at the whole social media thing? Of your team isn't doing well, but you're on social media. Like yeah, having yeah, a, yeah. how do you view that? Because I feel like you're not on it because you're a professional. Like, I just look at it, yeah, how if you I were a manager. done it, yeah? No, yeah. how I would have done it. Say in fact, me, if I did, when I, social media just come in a game, innit? Yeah, yeah, I remember. When I was on the way on the last few years of my career, but if we didn't win on a Saturday, you wouldn't really see me on social media. You definitely wouldn't see me at a photo shoot. Mm. Like, I I walked out at night, talked to the people that run night when I was there. If we had lost a game on a Tuesday in Champions League or Wednesday and I had a photo shoot the next day, I weren't there. Or I didn't play well, not coming. I used to meet my management, New Era, mostly on a Thursday or Wednesday. They'd come up to London, from London to Manchester. Ask them how many times they had to go back down because I didn't come out my bedroom or my room in my house. No, you can't come in. I don't want to talk to no one. Don't do it. I had to talk about strategy moving forward or talk about commercial deals or to have an interview for Sanzo. I'm not doing it. Because I didn't want to be seen. I'd be embarrassed. What do you mean? Mm. I don't want people to see me doing all this stuff here after I've just lost a game or I haven't played that well. I used to be embarrassed. My pride was mashed up. Yeah, Walk into the school and I've got a kid going, oh, uh, I support uh, Man City, we beat you. I wanted to p- put him in the bush. But, and then I look at it now, does it mean that because some of these guys, they're... they're their filter or their, their their presence on social media, social media doesn't change regardless of the result. doesn't change. The result could be negative or positive. You're going to see them consistently the same way on social media. Does that mean they care less than what I did? That's what I struggled with at the beginning. But through speaking to the likes of Pogba, Jesse, knowing them, other kids that I've seen on social media, 
I know they love football. They love it. They live and breathe football. But they're being judged because of their social media presence. I done it at the beginning as well. I under, I've, I've come to understand it a lot better now. That, and their personalities might be different. These guys, some of these new generation might not be people that get down too much. Mm. Don't get too high and don't get too down. I used to go down into the doldrums sometimes and think, wow, this the worst day of my life just now. We just got beat by Sanzo. We might not win the league now because of that. Gee, well, go and do a commercial. No, 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 no chance. No, I'm not going. But people just deal with situations differently and they're getting judged for it. Mm. It's a new generation, different, the, man. The thing is, though, because it's like, I definitely all am up for like not trying to kill someone because of their social media presence. I think it's a little bit... Sorry weak. to cut you. Sorry. Yeah. The key is perception. Yeah. Perception is king in this situation because say, for instance, this is an A-list player, best player in the league or whatever, and they get beat Saturday. Should he really be on social media? In him and himself, I don't care. I am what I am. This is me. I'm happy all the time. Win or lose, but I'm going to be the same. It's a great message in your own head, but there's other people that are going to judge you and it's going to create pressure on you and your teammates. So you might have to act a little bit differently. So portray that is what I was going to come so across. So portray a different, different image. Maybe I can't lie. like LeBron James. That's mm, what LeBron I James come playoff time tweets social media is on shutdown but I think that's really important that sends a message of professionalism yeah bro I care it's perception yeah perception and timing and I, I wouldn't like it and do you know why though because it's like for me well, I who does see... it that you don't like them who does it no I don't mind anyone doing it I just don't, I don't, I don't I'm not really that invested anymore in anyone I think doing now, it the, the, I'm not interested the... but if I was heavily invested and I mean like management or something like that I would have a problem because it's like we need to all here be on the same page we're not playing well right now. So now we need to take a look at what the hell is going on Wait. in order for us to get to this point. And this is not pointing at any one individual because like I said, when Lacazette and Aubameyang were doing it, Arsenal fans were on them. I didn't really care because I was like, I don't think that is the sole reason that we're, I don't even think that's a contributing factor to us doing poor because mm. there was a part we were doing really well and they were doing that. So, But over the course of time, I'm talking years now, if things are not going well, I think everybody a part of a situation has to look at their contribution to the downfall of something. And I think if that is potentially a downfall, like you said, if me doing my social media thing now is an issue because X, Y, and Z is pissed off, which is having a result in this in this particular manner, I'll stop doing it. One thing it does bring is pressure. Bit of so pressure. if that brings pressure, you, the, the best players, the best leaders are here to alleviate pressure. Mm -mm. So bringing it by doing X, and you know you're doing X by doing X, Y, and Z, You've got, to, you've got to cool it down a little bit. But, and, but I don't get... Listen, if I was a manager at a football club now, I'm telling you right now, I'm doing everything within my powers to shut down all social media on certain days. Day after a game, win, lose or draw, we ain't posting. I don't want it. I, the 24 hours maybe before, I don't know. I would devise something where you always in your contract in the small print somewhere, social media gets switched off on this day and if you don't, you're getting fined. You ain't come or don't come to this football club because I ain't having it because I ain't having nothing that comes in that brings more pressure to me. I'm getting asked questions about it in, in my press conferences. It's all I want to hear about football, not talk about someone's social media. That's the way I would run it. But that's up to the clubs if they're going to do that. They, they, some clubs I think feel they ain't got the power to do that. Listen, you're at my football club. You're listening to what I'm saying because I'll tell you what. If you don't, you're on the bench. Go and watch in the stands and look what it looks like to be a player at my club about your worried, more more worried about your social media come on man I, I would not have it I would but I'm not in management bring for back personal Fergie. reasons bring back Fergie Donny wouldn't have any like I said social do you reckon players wouldn't come to your club because you're saying listen on these days you don't post no they'd still come they'd still come That's That's what what a successful club they'll come give them. Yeah. Wouldn't and you're paying them the peas they're going to come for me it's not even like Day. I, I don't think I care about days. I'm just like times. Like but that ain't even a big thing though, Poet. It's not it? a big it's thing. It's not a big thing, but you know what it is? These little things are percentages. They add up. But that's what I'm saying. See, the small details count, man. In certain times, you just I think it's just about what's appropriate for the time. Like me, if I'm playing for a team and we're playing badly, the last thing I'm doing is go on social media. Like that's just, I've really got to get my head right. What's going on? Why am I a part of this situation? How are we going to make it better collectively? I'll tell mm. you what, I'll share that energy over there and not over here. Let's take a look at what some of the past teams done. Oh, right. So that's what they were doing. Well, I want to be like the past teams. We've mm. got to try and take some aspects of that as well. Mm. And I don't think there's that. I think there's this 
social media is rubbish, social media is rubbish. And then it's like the players are kind of rebellious because they want to do their own thing. And then that's their one part where they're quite rebellious rather than saying to them, we've got no problem with you doing this. It's what you put up. It's the content. It's when it's put up. There is timing. I think there is a... Yeah. You can I'm, I'm all well. for social media. I can't sit here and hammer social media. I was the, one of the first, if not the first, footballers to get on Twitter. To yeah, get you on were a bubble. So you like, bubble. I was, yeah, I was bang on it. So I can't sit here and say, oh, it's a bad thing. I might add one like... I remember Giggsy and Gary Neville going, what's all this Twitter? But what are you doing? What are you doing? No, look at Gary now. He's on it more than me now. He understands it. Gary loves it. Loves but arguing. A lot of people are sceptical, but you just evolve with it and just evolve and evolve. But I got fined. I was a, again, I was a scapegoat for a lot of this. Yeah. I got fined mad money for like certain tweets and stuff like that at the time because I was working it out, learning on the job. Hmm. But as soon as the corporates res- come in, yeah, responsibility has cool. to come in. Yeah, exactly. So if oh, it's... Okay, no. No, you know what? I need to wee you real quick. Go on, then. There's no rules. Yeah, come on. Talk to... My name's Karen talking to Rio while she got toilet. Yeah, that feels like Wicked. Weaver. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Do you know one thing I need to ask you? Because again, go on. I don't know how long you how long you got anyway, it's 1222 now. How long have you been? How long have you been going for? Uh, a bit. Over whatever now. I'm alright, whatever. Um, you know what? I, I, this is an idea. I know this is the best thing to do. Yeah. We pause, we get food. Yeah, and come back. And maybe carry on for a bit. Yeah. Do you yeah, we can. Well, I thought it's just an idea. But yeah, go on. I'm hungry. Let's get energy a little bit. Yeah. We Sweet. Can, like, Cristiano. But we didn't need a training. We we played that game, yeah. Yeah. After the game, everyone's going, "Boss, got to get him. What a player, got to get him." We was on the coach. All of a sudden, half an hour, hour. Couple, what's going on? Not moving. It's outside the stadium. And then all of a sudden, Chinese whispers comes back. Now they're in the in the boardroom trying to sign the kid that that Ronaldo. So- and Did they scout him before? <laughs> They'd known about him. He okay. worked like an unknown quantity, but yeah. the extent of...